Right guys, what is going on? The Buster Barnes here, bringing you my recap slash review of Game Week 8 in Fantasy Premier League. We will find out if I could finally get two green arrows in a row moving on from last week. But if you guys are interested and do enjoy these recap slash reviews, please be sure to leave a like and comment down below how your team did or what you're thinking of doing over the international break. Two weeks now until the next FPL dad deadline. Maybe some time for you guys to use your wild cards if you have not already and also to keep an eye on the player prices changing as well but I will be showing you guys my team as well as going through the fixtures just a quick recap to see how other teams did and what other players you can be looking out for for my next preview which will obviously come just before the next match weekend as always do be sure to subscribe for more fantasy premier league content and with that said let's get into how my team did for game week eight Okay, so as you could see by the overlay, we are now ranked 216,178, which is quite a big increase from last week, actually. About 200,000 rank, we did get 79 points, which is 24 points over the average score. And also, we did not use a hit either, so very nice. My transfer was, in fact, bringing in Hakim Ziyech for a straight swap from Christian Pulisic and what a decision that proved to make. I thought Sheffield United might cause Chelsea some issues as we didn't perform that well against them last season. However, Ziyech managed to get two assists, got the bonus points as well in the bag. He had a brilliant game and it proved to be a pretty good transfer on my behalf. And to be fair, quite a lot of returns from the team in general. Martinez getting a clean sheet against Arsenal, which was actually a bit of a shock. Didn't, didn't think he'd be able to keep a clean sheet there. And um, we also had Lamptey getting a clean sheet. We had Chilwell scoring a goal, even though he didn't keep the clean sheet. Robertson, maybe not great, but they were against City away, not really expecting too much there. Going on to the midfield, we had Salah score a penalty, which, you know, a lot of people have Salah, so that doesn't add much. But Zaha got an assist, would have maybe helped for a bit more, because it's been Palace 1 4 1, but not awful, at least he got something. Grealish gets an assist as well. Could have had a goal, he had another shot cleared off the line, I believe, against um, Leeds it was. He had some shots cleared off the line as well, so maybe a bit unlucky, maybe, hopefully. We can be seeing him get some more goals in the future. Son didn't return, so you would be quite disappointed if you chose to captain him. I know that him and Kane were two of the captaincy options, and if people went for Son, they would prove to be a little bit disappointed. It will be interesting now to see what people do with him now that Tottenham do have a bit of a tricky run of games coming up. But like I said, Ziyech did do very well. Calvert-Lewin gets an assist as well against United, which isn't too bad. He's keeping on ticking his points tally over. Harry Kane getting the goal and the bonus points against West Bromwich Albion. I think some people were hoping that Spurs maybe beat West Brom a bit more. I knew it was going to be a tight game because West Brom's defence actually has improved quite a lot. But it was good that my captaincy did pay off and um, Kane did get the goal. Obviously would have been better off from captaining Ziyech, but... It was a bit too risky, in my opinion, against um, a team that we weren't so good against last time round. Kilman getting one point. Uh, Mitchell, he seems to be out. Maybe I'll look to transfer him out if there's nothing else I can do. Um, Brewster did get the two points. Mitchell, unknown return date for from a knock, though. So you'd think that he'd be back soon. Although, is his place going to be in jeopardy? I'm not too sure. Looking at the fixtures, Burnley getting a clean sheet. Maybe with Ben Mee back in the team, they are going to prove to be a little bit more solid defensively. So maybe they will be a team to eventually look at. Southampton carry on winning ways, even without Danny Ings. But I do think their fixtures do take a little bit more of a difficult turn. So it will be interesting to see how they do go. I don't think Adams is a bad, cheap option for a striker by the way I do think that at the start of the season he was unlucky to maybe not get more goals Manchester United 3-1 against Everton did look pretty good Fernandez especially very tempting to bring someone like him in especially when he takes their penalties however man you we just need to see a bit more consistency from them in the league but I do think we probably will do at some point they seem to have a bit of a trend where they lose a bunch of games all these jobs on the line and they pull it out the bag and that seems to go in some sort of cycle so not too sure about them but I don't think Fernandez is bad if you've got him I definitely keep him if you do have him Palace 4-1 against Leeds I did think that Palace could potentially win this game however 4-1 was quite a shock I think you hold on to Palace assets if you do have them and by that I mean probably Zaha I don't know who else you would have Chelsea versus Sheffield. Chelsea's fixtures are maybe a little bit tougher moving forward if we do check. I know they do have Spurs soon. Newcastle away is actually a bit of a bogey fixture for them as well. Leeds, Everton, Wolves, a bit of a tough one. But I wouldn't get rid of Chelsea attackers if you did have them. Defensively might prove to be a little bit difficult. But I think someone like Chilwell who has attacking potential, you should 
probably be looking to hold, at least for now. West Ham still looking decent now against Fulham. Ben Rama getting an assist actually in this game, I believe. So um, very interesting. Although Fulham probably should have scored that penalty. Lookman going for the Penenka and missing. I, I'm not going to be too harsh on the guy because, let's be honest, other people miss penalties that weekend. Obviously, his was maybe just the more comical. Leicester. Now, the funny thing with Leicester is I always look at their starting eleven and I think, you know, wow, this doesn't look like a good team. They're going to lose. They always seem to pull the win out of the bag. Maybe that's credit to Rodgers. I'm not sure. They seem to be getting a lot of goals and penalties. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because Vardy's scoring a lot of penalty goals and you sort of think, well, Vardy could be a good asset, but how many more penalties are Leicester going to keep getting? Are they going to keep getting them every game? Maybe they will, but I don't know. It just seems a little bit dodgy. Madison coming back into the team. I'm not sure. We need to see maybe Leicester winning a bit more than just by one goal. And so maybe then that we'll have a little bit more faith in going over their assets. Their defence just, on paper, it just doesn't look very good. And I think this is the issue with the Leicester assets. City v Liverpool. Man City, I do know for a fact if I go onto them and just have a look at their team. They do have a good run of fixtures coming up soon. If I just click on Edison and... Um, I think that their assets are going to be looked after. As you can see, after Tottenham away, they have Burnley and Fulham at home. United's away. Don't know what United's going to show up. West Brom, Southampton, Newcastle. Um, it's just a crazy amount of fixtures. Like You feel like you need a Man City player, but the question is, who do you get? Like Maybe the only players that are really guaranteed to be starting are Sterling and De Bruyne. Like, maybe Jesus is an option, but Aguero's going to be back. Um, Foden doesn't get great game time. I guess for 6.5 mil, though, you can maybe look past that. Um, and as well, the defence, who's going to play? Obviously, there's Laporte, but he's a bit more expensive. Walker could be a good shout. I think Cancelo is the one that everyone is looking at. However, with Mendy coming back, how much is Cancelo actually going to play? I think we're going to have to keep an eye on that, though. But I am really going to be looking at a Man City asset. And I think it could potentially be in defence... Um, or maybe taking out Wilfred Zaha for Foden, I'm not too sure, but I don't think I'd be bringing one in for the match against Tottenham, though, so I think I'm going to hold off on that anyway. But um, again, just looking at the fixtures, and let me go back here, and um, yeah, Aston Villa, a big shock result against Arsenal, really just outplayed Arsenal to be honest. Arsenal have not been very good. I have a mate who supports Arsenal, and he was basically saying how bad William was. Um, I think going forward, they're just really struggling. Um, and they just lack creativity. I don't know why they're not playing Pepe. I don't know why their midfield is Partey and Elneny. Just seems very, very strange to me. Maybe when Arsenal do sort out what their eleven is, they'll be a little bit better. But just none of their assets really seem appealing at the moment. I guess their most appealing one is Saka, but then even he scored an own goal. So, yeah, if I go back to the points, guys, that was what... My team is basically the same anyway. I haven't made a transfer yet. But um, if I am looking on to next week... I probably will just hold my transfer. Maybe I take out Mitchell for someone else who's a cheap option that's playing. But I can't even think who that is. So I might just keep him, to be honest with you. So yeah, it could prove to be just a game week where I do hold on to my players. And maybe wait until next the week after where I can maybe think of bringing in a Man City player. Um, who, again, that will be, I don't know. Maybe if Son doesn't perform, I can do a bit of tinkering and bring a midfielder in. Or like I said, maybe a Zaha to a Foden. However, looking at Crystal Palace's fixtures, I think they're actually pretty good for the next three. However, maybe Burnley away and West Brom away, you wouldn't expect them to score loads of goals. So actually, that could be a decent time to get rid of Zaha for a Foden. But then the question is, like I said, how much is Foden going to play in the future? But that is going to be my recap and review of Game Week 8. Guys, if you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you are planning on doing over the international break. You're going to use any chips, going to use your wild card. I'd love to know. As always, be sure to subscribe for more fantasy Premier League content as well as other footballing content and FIFA content as well. I do appreciate all your guys' support. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you next time.